Hello, YouTubers. Thank you for stopping in again. Today's topic, Yeshua's teachings versus Paul's teachings on salvation. Now, this is a three-page compil compilation of Douglas J. Del Tondo's from his book of 500 pages on Jesus' words only. I love his book. I definitely strongly recommend everybody purchase this book. It is packed with information on every single page. Now he started with 1 Kings in his book and I'm like, yes, I had the same exact impression. One, we listen to the Father and the Father only. And if you think you're, you know, associating with a prophet and he tells you to do something, well, you're going to learn that, uh, no, 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 no. The Father tells you to do something, you do what he tells you to do. That's it. There's no other way around it. In this, um, I'm going to change uh, L-O-R-D and G-O-D to Adonai instead because in the Torah it says don't use the other names of gods and apparently we have learned G-O-T-T G-O-D and that was a pagan god. So let's start with for, um, uh, John 3.16 that's very important that you understand the translation error in this John 3.16 uh, in the Greek it means something not quite not only quite different but also actually the opposite of how it reads in the King James Version and the NIV, it should read, He who continues to believe and trust should have eternal life. This is the true meaning of the underlying Greek verbs. Faithfulness, not one moment of faith. It, it's what it should be. Therefore, we have a choice to make. We can explain salvation based on Yeshua's words only, or we can use Paul's words. They are two radically different messages. This comes from his checklist on salvation. And you can do this with all kinds of other top topics, baptism, etc. Paul does not fall in line with those teachings. First part is Yeshua says, The one who repents from sin is justified. Parable of the publican and the Pharisee. Luke 18 verses 10 through 14. The son who was dead but now repents is alive again born again. Parable of the prodigal son, Luke 15 verses 1 through 32. Um, now Paul says one is not justified nor born again by repentance from sin, but by faith alone. Ephesians 2 8 through 9. Romans 4 4. Any such addition to Paul's salvation by faith alone doctrine is the heresy of work salvation by Wilkins, Stanley, and Hodge, who are followers of Paul. So they they don't disagree with Paul. They continue to follow Paul over Yeshua. Not good news. Now Yeshua, on step number two, the one who relies upon Adonai's election to salvation and does not repent goes home to unjustified. Parable of the publican and the Pharisee, Luke 10, 18. Verses 10-14, through 14, Paul says, The one who relies upon Adonai's election alone for salvation is relying on the right thing. Roman 8, 33, Adonai elects you to the salvation by means of predestination, and hence, without any work on your part, faith is given to you as part of Adonai's work in you. Philippians 1, 6, Wilkins Stanley, that contradicts Yeshua's teachings by a long shot. So let's check out number three when Yeshua says to have eternal life follow the Ten Commandments. Deny yourself. Repent. Do works worthy of repentance. And then follow Yeshua. If you give up fathers, mothers, and brothers for Yeshua, deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. You shall have eternal life. Matthew 19, verses 27 through 29. Matthew 10, 37 through 39. That was Matthew 10, verses 37 through 39. John 12, verses 25 through 26. And Paul's version is to have eternal life. Say you with your mouth that Yeshua is Adonai and believe he is resurrected. That's Romans 10, verse 9. Do not add any work. Not Now to him that worketh, the reward is not reckoned as of grace, but as of debt. Romans 4.4 4. 
If salvation depends on keeping the law, then salvation by faith is made void. If they are of the law, are heirs. Faith is made void. Romans 4.14 4. So are we misunderstanding Paul? I don't think so, but you decide. Point number four says, A Christian will go to hell if they deny Yeshua under pressure. And that's Luke 12, verses 4 through 9. Paul says, if we deny Yeshua, we won't deny us. But in the end, Yeshua will still accept us because he cannot deny himself. And that's Stanley's teachings that follow Paul. Paul says, if we shall deny him, he also will deny us. If we are faithless, he abideth faithful, for he cannot deny himself. In 2 Timothy 2, 12-13. Do we misunderstand that? No. I think it's pretty clear. And Douglas J. Del Tondo is doing a great job of just comparing notes here on salvation. And you can use this on so many different areas that he talks about. Baptism, circumcision, etc. Now on number five, point number five, as part of an answer on how to have eternal life, Yeshua tells a rich man to repent by giving his wealth to the poor. The man is grieved, Matthew 19, 16 through 26, Mark 10, 17 through 20, 31, Luke 18, 18 through 26. Yeshua tells another rich man who repents and repays those he stole from that today salvation has come to this house, Luke 19, 9. And Paul simply says salvation could not possibly depend on any works of repentance. Salvation is by faith alone. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9, Romans 4, 4. Oh, boy. Okay, well, this is one of the things you got to understand. You're going to accept Yeshua's teachings or Paul's. And number six, Yeshua says, The thief on the cross in front of a crowd, hostile to Yeshua, says, Yeshua, remember me when thou comest in thy kingdom. Luke 23, 42. Yeshua said, that if you confess me before men, then he will confess you before the angels in heaven. Luke 12, 8. Yeshua thus tells the thief, this day you will be with me in paradise. And Paul says salvation could never depend on confession of Yeshua before men. If it was a means of salvation, this would be works of righteousness. Instead, even though Paul said that if you should say Yeshua is Adonai with your mouth and believe he was resurrected, then you shall be saved. Romans 10, 9. Faith is all you need to be saved. Romans 4, 4. Paul must mean that such confession with flow will flow naturally from faith rather than salvation is produced by a public confession, Wilkin explains. And 7. Salvation is based on Adonai forgiving our sins. If we do not forgive others after you receive forgiveness, Adonai will revoke your faith, your forgiveness. Adonai will revoke your forgiveness and send you to hell to be tormented. Matthew 18, 28 through 35. Matthew 6, 12. And, Sal and Paul says, Salvation is not contingent on your forgiving others. Salvation only has one condition, a one-time faith. Romans 4, 4. If you ever once had faith, Romans 10, 9, you are no longer able to be condemned. Romans 8, 1. Oh my goodness. Really? And we're following who? Well, let's see. Yeshua promised those who kept guard, number 8, of his word should never taste death. John 8, 51. He who continues to believe, trust, should be saved. John 3, 16. He who continues to disobey the Son continues to be under Adonai's wrath. John 3, 36. Paul, there is no endurance in any action required. Only a one-time faith is necessary for salvation. Romans 4, 4. One could faith could fail to keep and guard Yeshua's word and still be saved because one is eternally secure based on a one-time faith. Romans 8, 1, 10, 9. No, it doesn't work that way. we got to stay on the straight and narrow. Oops, we 
and got off of it. Yeshua said, a branch in me, number nine, that produces no fruit because it failed to keep staying in me will be thrown outside the vineyard. It is as a branch that died dried up. It is gathered up into the fire and is burned. John 15, 1-6. Paul writes, if fruit or works were necessary to a avoid being thrown outside Adonai's vineyard, becoming dead, and then being burned in hell, it would be a salvation by works. Instead, salvation is by faith, without any works. Romans 4, 4, 14, Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. And 10, um, he says, a servant of Yeshua who produces no fruit is useless and will be thrown into outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Matthew twenty five fourteen. This place of weeping and gnashing is the fiery furnace. Matthew 13, verses 42 and 50. Paul says, if fruit or works were necessary to avoid being thrown outside and be burned in hell, where there is weeping and gnashing, it would be a salvation by works. Instead, salvation is by work, faith without any works. Romans 4, 4, 14. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. Oh, dear. Where are we, folks, in this timeline? Number 11. Yeshua, if you receive word with joy and believe for a while, but in time of temptation... You fall away, you are lost. If you are choked by the pleasures of this world and bring no fruit to completion, you are lost. If, on the other hand, you bring forth fruit to the end in patient endurance, you will be saved. Luke eight thirteen through 15 You shall be saved if you endured to the end. Matthew ten twenty two verse 22 If you receive the word with joy, and believe for a while. You are eternally saved, says Paul. Romans 8, 1, 10, 9. Salvation cannot depend on you or anything you do thereafter. Otherwise, it is salvation by works. Romans 4, 4, 14. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9 verses. Thus, if you fall away or are choked with the pleasures of this life and have no fruit, you are still saved. There is no need to endure in faith as long as you believed once. Uh, my gosh, are you kidding me? Okay. How many people have said that you're saved by faith and works? It's all of the apostles did, but Paul does not. So on number 12, among the sheep and the goats, who both call Yeshua Adonai, the group serves Yeshua by feeding the brethren in need clothing them and giving them water goes to heaven the other group calls Yeshua Adonai who fails to provide such charity are as a consequence sent to eternal fire parable of the sheep and the goats Matthew twenty five thirty two. a faith that ignores the poor brethren is dead and cannot save as James 2 14 through 17 Every tree, therefore, that bringeth, bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Matthew 7, 19. And Paul says, Anyone who shall call on the name of Jehovah shall be saved. Romans ten thirteen. This is permanent, and no condition consequence can be put on this, that you must be charitable or have fruit thereafter. Otherwise, it is salvation by works. Romans 4, 4, 14, Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9, 8 through 9. Hence, it cannot be true that if the goats, in fact, ever once called on the name of Jehovah, that they should be sent to hell. James' statement that uh, paraphrases the principle of Matthew 25, 32 contradicts Paul, and we are not to believe even an angel from heaven if he should contradict Paul. And that's Galatians 1 through 8. Last but not least, uh, I keep telling you, the one who keeps on listening to my teaching and keeps on believing in one who sent me, keeps on having eternal life, Yeshua says, and does not come into condemnation, but has departed out of death into life, John 5, 24. And Paul says, 
once in Christ, there is no now no condemnation. This entry is by a one-time faith. Romans 10, verse 9. As a result, freedom from condemnation is not secured by any continuity in listening to, listening to Yeshua's teaching or believing in Jehovah. Okay, that's, that's blasphemy. I mean, it's just what Paul says is his own words and his own opinions. Now, folks, you have to decide. Are you going to believe in Yeshua's words and live? Or are you going to believe in Paul's words and not live? At least you'll live up until this lifespan, and that's it. You'll have no hereafter. You'll live in gnashing of teeth and uh, outer darkness. There is no serving the two. The Father will not have it. And in closing, I would like to definitely give you the first commandment. It's the most important. Love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind can't accept anything that is contrary to Jehovah's words. Yeshua very clearly, you either accept him or you don't. If you accept somebody else, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, forget it. First Kings for 13 applies here. You cannot. So folks, please, think this over, read it, and pray. I say this in the name of Yeshua.